We're shining the light on lamps today. Listen in. I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, episode 377. Lamp sources and upcycles and a few more items all about lamps tossed into the mix. Lamps are difficult. I find lamps very challenging. I don't think Anita finds lamps as challenging as I do. Well, I'm very, very picky. So it is challenging for me because I have a hard time finding something that I really love. So that makes it challenging for me. And I think the right lamp can really elevate a space and the wrong lamps, I think, can really bring it down. So I think it is something that is one of those, you know, some things you can kind of get away with, eh, do whatever. But I think the lamps that, I think those are key. I think you're absolutely right. In fact, I know you're absolutely right, but I'm not sure that people think about lamps <laughs> as much as they should. Um and maybe I overthink the lamp. That's why I struggle with them. But here's what I find about lamps. A lot of lamps are super, super expensive. And yes. even though I believe that it's a very important uh, element in so many levels of your decor, not only the, the look and the shape and getting the lamp itself right, but how the lamp works with everything else in your room, but the all-important illumination and the color of the light that's coming out, and all of that is so important. So there's so many things, the functionality, where the cord gets hidden. I mean, we can keep going on and on about things that involve a lamp in a room and how it impacts your decor. But do you hear people thinking and talking about lamps? No, people are talking about their rug and their sofa right. and their draperies. And lamps seem to be like, oh yeah, just use those lamps. Oh yeah, we've had those table lamps. Right. Yeah. It's an afterthought. Just use the lamp left over from this other room. But I think that's a big mistake if you're not putting thought into the lamps because a lamp that's not properly sized, for example, can really throw off the room. And what I see more than anything, I think are lamps that are sized too small. For, it seems like that tends to be the direction they go. But you can buy a lamp that's too big for a table too. But uh, yeah, it, so you really do have to be mindful of the size and making sure it's balanced for the table that it is on. Yeah, yeah. So um, just in general, the height of a lamp. Now this is all, lamps are not sitting on the floor unless it's a floor lamp. So mostly today, I think we're going to be talking about table lamps. Um, so when I say these dimensions, it has to do with the table lamp. And of course, it not sitting on the floor, the, the dimension of the lamp is also driven by the height of the sofa arm or the chair arm or the table that it's on. So so these are very general terms, but in general, the height of a table lamp should be somewhere between 26 and 31, including the finial. And really the real sweet spot is somewhere between 26 and 29. And again, it's presuming sort of the average height of the sofa and the side table. Um and then there are, you know, the the parts of the lamp that we just sort of run over quickly. You've got the base, you've got the shade, you've got the harp, and you've got the finial. And I think something that some people don't understand about the harp, which is that, you know, the, the sort of the metal piece that connects the socket and the, the lamp itself to the shade, those come in different heights. So sometimes your shade might not be the problem. Maybe you can just either increase or decrease the size of your harp, which you can buy that as an individual piece. Now, yeah. as a side note, there's those clip-on ones that sometimes happen with small lamps. So they just kind of clip onto the bulb itself. And then there's that kind that it sort of the bulb sits on top of it and you screw the bulb in and that holds the shade on. So then obviously there's not a finial opportunity there. And oftentimes those are sort of a lower price shade. I am not so opposed to those, but you know, it, it's a type of uh, mechanism that isn't going to allow you to adjust the height of the, sh the shade vis-a-vis -vis the lamp. 
dislike I know those. you strongly dislike But it's those. because the <laughs> lampshade, you can never get it level. That's the problem. It's not, yeah. it's not a snobby thing. It's just I want my lampshade to be level. And if I can't get it level, then it, it, what's the point? I mean, that's going to look funny when people walk in. Yeah, I have two that are like that, and I like the shades so much that I live with it. Um, but I am not all the time, but I am on occasion, you know, having to adjust them because you know somebody walks heavy past it, it tilts. <laughs> yes, that sounds okay. You can, tr- you know, trick right. it out with like mm-hmm. a little, like you know, a little twist tie or something. You could get in there, sneak it in, and kind of tighten it up. And so, so it, so I have done that. So don't look well, inside some of my lamps. They might have little twist ties in there. No, no, no. That's, oh, no, that's fine as long as you've got a system that works. And I remember our previous house, there was a lamp store near me. And I loved having that near me because I could bring my lamp and they would find a lampshade that, that was just exactly right for my lamp. And then if the harp was too short or too tall, they would find the harp that was just exactly the right size for me. And it's so wonderful to have a shop like that nearby that can help you with all of that. But those kind of stores are just going away. So now it seems that you're really stuck buying these things online or maybe going to the hardware store and figuring it out yourself. But keep in mind that that is something that you can adjust with the harp. If you're using a lampshade that has a harp, you can buy taller or shorter harps. And that's not a big deal uh, to change those out. I know those lamp stores, we have one here that um, is still in business. It's been here for forever. And I had a lot of things rewired there, particularly some of the antique uh, chandeliers and stuff that were left in this house. I was a little worried about, you know, the catching on fire. Um, it's not an inexpensive endeavor to do that, but yes, those old timey lamp stores are pretty wonderful. Um, so if you are lucky enough to have one in your neighborhood, go explore it, see what they've got. And, you know, sometimes they might just have a collection of finials that you wouldn't see any place else. Sometimes they just come off lamps that they repair. So they might even have a, like a, just a, like a little vintage selection. So I highly recommend you just checking it out if you've got one in your neighborhood. Yeah, I love pretty finials too. So that's a fun thing to look for those. And it's hard to find the pretty finials anymore. That that seemed to be something that uh, was easily found, but I, I don't see those. Yeah, so the finial is an important uh, part, but again, you can only just have that if you've got a harp type lamp. So, um, so those are the basic bits and bobs of a lamp. Now, what I'm looking for lamps... I have to say, I don't want to spend a lot on a lamp. I mostly buy my lamps at thrift stores and I figure out how I'm going to upcycle them. So that's kind of how I approach lamp shopping. There, I do have a new lamp in my life <laughs> that is a new lamp, but I was under $30 and I do love it. And I'll tell you about Wait, that lamp. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'll tell you about that lamp now. It's okay. from the Better Homes and Gardens at Walmart collection. Oh, and I'm telling okay. you guys, okay. I am, full disclosure, I am working with them this year. And I'm a style maker for Better Homes and Gardens. And we we do uh, showcase these things from the Better Homes and Gardens at Walmart collection. So, But I would not, as you all know, tell you something I didn't love. I love this lamp. Um, it is... Not only has a great shape, it has sort of this metal cage, so it's kind of open and it has this lucite bottom. So it's got this modern thing. It's got a black shade, so it's got your touch of black. And inside the shade is gold foil. It's beautiful even when it's not lit up. When the sun hits the the inside of that shade in my room, my living room at a certain time of day, it's almost like it's on. So it's like twenty nine ninety nine or something like that. So I'll put the link to it in the show notes. Enough said. That is my new favorite lamp. I love it. But again, I've spent under under way under fifty dollars. It's like a thirty dollar lamp. Most of the time, I'm looking at lamps. Either at a home goods, I have bought some mercury uh, glass lamps at mm-hmm. a home goods. Those are pretty. That yeah, comes with the shade. Like, how can you go wrong? Right. Um, but most of the time, I want something that's a little interesting. But to find something at a thrift store uh, that you really want to put in your own home, you know, you got to think about how you're going to upcycle it. So if it's a metal lamp, you can for sure spray paint it been there, done that. You can also use this uh, product rub and buff. I think, Anita, you've talked about this rub and buff before. Am I right? Um, 
I don't know what it was called, but there is something you can put on that will dampen a, a shiny brass. It'll knock off the shine a little bit. Well, they have all, yeah, this is probably it, but they have all types of different finishes. And here's okay. the thing, like if you get a lamp, say, and you want to upcycle it and maybe the bottom is uh, a ceramic, but you know, the the major portion of it is a ceramic or even a glass, but then it has that bottom portion that's metal. And sometimes if it's a, a lesser, uh, you know, in a lamp that's not very expensive, it's got a chrome bottom and maybe you don't want the silver or just the chrome looks kind of cheapo. Well, you could get this rub and buff stuff. And because it'd be very hard to spray paint it when you're just talking about that small bit of metal. And so you can use this little tube of stuff to completely change the look of the metal. So you can make it an antique brass or an oil rub bronze, or you probably could even make it a black or something like that. So it's a little bit more um, controlled than going out at it with your spray paint can. That's a good point. Um, I wanted to talk about the light bulbs too. Okay. Uh, because it's because it's kind of a part of the lamp and it does impact uh, how much you're going to enjoy your lamp. So there's four kinds of bulbs that you can buy that I'm aware of. There's maybe more than this, but there's incandescent, halogen, compact fluorescent, and LED. So incandescent, those are the light bulbs that we grew up with. Those are the traditional bulbs. They have a warm yellow glow to them. And you probably don't even notice it unless you've taken a a picture with the lights on and the picture has turned out yellow. That is because you have an incandescent light on. Uh, So that's a very common photography problem. Uh, They tend to last no more than a thousand hours and they can be used with a dimmer. They're not as energy efficient as some, and they do tend to burn kind of hot. So you can't really touch the bulb if it's been on for a while. Uh, The halogen is going to be the closest to real daylight. It's known as white light. um, So colors are going to appear sharper. Uh, The bulbs can be dimmed, uh, and it's more energy efficient than incandescent, but more expensive. Uh, It does burn at a high temp. So you do have to be very careful with a halogen that there's nothing that's going to be touching the bulb. In fact, you may have heard about halogen bulbs exploding. And uh, have you heard of that? No. Okay. Well, um, I'm not sure what's causing it, but from what I'm, I'm hearing or what I'm from my research, it's the oils on your hand then cause the bulb If you touch it with your hand, the oils get on the bulb and the the oil somehow, I'm not sure how this happens, but it causes the bulb to heat up more quickly than it should and then it can explode. So you have to be careful with halogen bulbs. So they're a little more um, high maintenance than an incandescent bulb. Although incandescent bulbs, obviously, you have to be very careful with them because they break easily. Now, the next bulb is a compact fluorescent bulb. And this is going to last 10 times longer than an incandescent bulb. And these are the bulbs that you see most commonly out there. And they have the, they're kind of twisted on the end. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Not our favorites. I know. They're so bad. Yeah. Now the color tends to be warmer than the old style. The old style fluorescent bulbs used to be kind of a green color. But these, uh, the newer, the compact fluorescent ones, they've, I think, taken the green tint off of it. But here's my problem with the, one of my problems with the compact fluorescent bulbs. They have mercury in them, which is a heavy metal. Oh, and it is very, I didn't know that. Very, 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 did I say very enough? Toxic to humans. So if you break one, you basically need a hazmat suit to Stop protect it. yourselves. Yes, this is why I Why is no so- one... Except a new Joyce giving us this information. It's another reason to keep those out of your house, other than how ugly they are. So you have to be really careful. If it if one of these bulbs breaks, it is a serious uh, emergency situation in your house that you really don't want to be. I mean, some people are going to say I'm overstanding it, but I don't think I am because heavy metals can cause all kinds of health problems. And this is mercury. It's it's not a good one. So and they but anyway, they have about an eight thousand hour lifetime maximum on the compact fluorescent bulb. So you're going to have to be very careful not to break these because it can be, and I did break one one time, which was Mm. bad. Okay. And then the last one is an LED, which you probably know, Kelly, stands for light emitting diodes. Uh, They're very energy efficient and, you know, they're directional light. So these are most often used under cabinet lighting. 
Uh, but you probably have seen some bulbs with these. In fact, I bought some for to use in like a candle stick sconces. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a faux candlestick lamp. And so they you can put, sometimes they put a bunch of them in one light bulb and then you, that's what a kind of LED light bulbs look like. They have a lot of the uh, LED, LED bulbs in the one big light bulb. Mm-hmm. So that's the way these usually come. Uh, they're more expensive than the other bulbs, but they can last up to 50,000 hours. Wow. And they are cool burners, so it's not going to be hot to the touch. Mm-hmm. And you can buy them in various color cast. So you can kind of get the warm version, which um, is a 2700K. 3000K is more like natural light, and the 4000K is more like a blue light. So I haven't... I It's... I'm going to try some more LED lights. I don't have many, but I'm I'm interested in trying some. But anyway, so that keep that in mind that if the light color is off to you, try a different bulb. If it feels too blue or too yellow, you know that's not your lamp. That's the light bulb, and that can be easily changed. This is such good information. Um, you know, I just. I'm so stuck on the pink incandescent bulbs and I really need I to- I like those too. I need to move off. And even those that- Do you want you me can, to ship you some? Oh gosh. No, I have a black market source. But even <laughs> those are not the same pink Sylvania bulbs that you could get t- five years ago, no, 10 years ago. No, they're pretty pale. They're barely pink yeah. now. Yeah. They're not really doing it. Like I, I found- I was organizing up here and I have a little collection of lamps, you know, maybe I rotate them in and out. And I was, I could not even tell you how pleased it was like, I found like, uh, you know, a thousand dollars in a, you know, scrapbook or something like that. I found three pink incandescent bulbs that I just left in lamps when I rotated them out of my house. I was so excited to find them because I don't have any more in my stash. (laughs) So (laughs) I ran with them gingerly holding them like little babies into the house. And I screwed them into the other ones, what I, which I put some, I was trying these LEDs and I was just not happy. Here's the thing. I just have to be a big girl about it. And so does everybody else. You know, the whole lighting thing is changing. And I I live in a state that is on the forefront of all of this. And so I think this information you're giving us today is crucial crucial uh, because our lighting is so important. And I'm going to say, Nita Jean, that we might have to do a deep, deep dive into LED bulbs and like maybe maybe we'll wait till after Christmas and really give everybody the full scoop because I don't want anybody surprised by the fact that you're not going to be able to get incandescent bulbs anymore in the near foreseeable future. Uh, You know, and I actually stockpiled them when they were going out. I bought a bunch. I think, I don't know if I still have any, but I bought boxes and boxes. <sighs> well, you can still get them on Amazon, but I don't know. Well, because, yeah, they were probably still built, you know, made. Yeah, they can it. still sell them, but I think they can't be made. I was we're just working with a client and we're doing exterior lighting at her house. And I was making purchases for her, uh, you know, and getting ideas. And the woman I was dealing with at the lighting wholesale lighting place in New York. It's like, oh, we're shipping to California. Well, you know that you can't use the Edison bulbs and you can't use the incandescent bulbs if she's having her home inspected because she, and she is because the inspector is coming. So obviously, you know, you can switch the bulb when they leave, Yeah, but you have to be it. But here's the thing. If you this was so. If we bought a fixture and it was not an inexpensive fixture, and she needed ten of them for outside, that only took incandescent bulbs, and we put those on her house now, right? What's she gonna do in? You know, what's the life well, of an incandescent bulb when that bulb blows out and it cannot take an LED bulb, right? So you well, have to make what, choices. What kind to- of light fixture just takes incandescent? Usually, they these they. The new bulbs usually fit in the same sockets. Well, it was it was a situation where we we caught, we had to take one off the the uh, you know the the decision making process. One whole fixture had to be removed because its inability to accept LEDs. 
So I'm just saying there are issues out there, right? And you don't want to be committing to a light fixture that can't take the the LED bulbs or the type of LED bulbs that are required here in California and then probably in other states as we go on with these laws. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy-to-reach goal is to add DOSE to your wellness regime. DOSE is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT And use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. I had to go into an office last week uh, for some stuff for my daughter and sit in some offices that had those big fluorescent bulbs, the big, you know, long fluorescent tube bulbs, you know, Mm -hmm. in the ceiling. Mm -hmm. It was so bothersome to me. I yeah, I could not wait to get out of the building. It was so <laughs> horrible. And I felt so sorry for these poor people that work here. And I thought, and one of them was really cranky. And I thought, well, no wonder you're cranky. This lighting is driving me nuts. It's just all about the lighting. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking, yeah, I think that can make someone cranky. Anyway, I was giving her a pass. <laughs> Oh, well, isn't that nice of you? No, lighting can definitely make you cranky. So uh, this is great information. Thank you for sharing that about the bulbs. I think that was really good. Did you um, want to cover anything else with the bulbs? No, no, no. I think that's that's what we've got so far. Okay. So then for your upcycling, as as I mentioned, I mean, you know, it's a lamp. um, So there are only certain bits of it. The shade, that's an easy one. You know, so if you like the base... And please do check the wiring if you're buying at a thrift store or secondhand. Make sure the wiring looks good. If there's any frayed wires, then either pass on it or know that you're going to have to invest you know, a significant more than you probably paid for the lamp to get it rewired because, you know, obviously the labor and the cost of the materials. If you're buying a lamp for $4, it's going to cost you a lot more. So figure yeah, so that out. It might in. not be as much of a bargain. Well, what no. do you usually pay to rewire your? Because I've had chandeliers rewired from Europe. 
but I've never had an old lamp rewired. So yeah, I mean, it really, it really, I'm sure, you know, depends on where you are geographically and all of that. But the the shop here, um, I've had small table lamps rewired. It's probably like $30, something like that. I've also brought in, um, one time I brought in one of those Demijohn um, jugs and I had that made into oh, a lamp. Nice. Yeah, that nice. costs more because you had to drill the bottom. But, you know, keep in mind too, something like that, Anything that is kind of vase like, um, you can make into a lamp, or someone oh. can. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah. So that that's an option too. So if you have something you really love and you think, oh, this would be a great lamp, but it, you know, obviously, don't commit to it without getting a quote on how much it's going to cost you. But so here, you know, if you find a lamp, the wiring looks good. You just really hate the shade. Well, that's easy, um, and you can find a lovely shade that will work for you. Um, you can paint it. You can spray paint it. You can use this rub and buff. Um, but other than that, there's you know not too much that you can do to a lamp. It's not like you're going to be gluing things onto it. So you know those are the upcycle options. But I think it's pretty significant because you're talking about a. a a lamp with kind of like good bones, like it's got a good shape to it, but it's just in a bad metal or it's just an ugly color. Well, wow, what a difference. I bought these mint green lamps once and they're very big and they just have this really cool um, sort of gourd-like shape to them. And you've all seen lamps very similar to that and they're very substantially sized. It, I got them for 10 bucks for the pair and I spray painted mm, them wow. gold and I put black shades on them and oh, they nice. look fantastic now. But they so, were mint green with dented white shades. Oh, wow. Well, and that's right. And if you see a lamp in a thrift store, usually the, the lamp shade is what's dating it. So sometimes you can buy a really beautiful, I brought some beautiful, elegant lamps that I just, all I had to do was change out the lampshade and the cords were in great shape. So let's just talk a little bit about some lampshades because I really think the drum shades are kind of the way to go. I think that's my favorite kind of lampshade and that is really kind of the style these days. I think you can't go wrong with a uh, drum lampshade. And I did want to mention Pottery Barn has a lot of lampshades. Ballard Design has a lot of drum lampshades as well. And Lamps Plus has a uh, black lampshades with the gold interior that we love so much. Oh, they so do? there's several places you can get lampshades. Okay. So now Home Depot has a very nice black lampshade, but it does not have the gold inside, but it's oh, very nice. reasonably priced. Yeah. It's like hey, That's right. And Home Depot does have a lot of lampshades and, and Lowe's has some, it's not a big selection on those, but they, they are there. Like burlap seems to be yeah, there. Yeah, they seem to have a very small selection. You're absolutely right. Like in my Home Depot, as big as it is, it's like one little section of one shelf. But they have what you'd be looking for. They have like a cream one, they have a burlap one, and they have a black one. Like done. So uh, one thing I wanted to mention about um, – the lamp and its configuration and sort of what it should look like and how maybe the harp plays into this as well. So you don't, re you don't want to see a lot of the neck of the lamp, you know, so that would be the part coming up from the base um, up into where the socket goes. So you really don't want to be seeing a whole lot of that. And you certainly don't want to be seeing the socket. Now, again, that could be a shade thing, but it could be a harp thing. So, um, if you really like your shade, measure your harp and then see if you can get one that's maybe a couple of inches shorter. And then those are very inexpensive. And then you could just change out the harp, just squeeze it together, take it off, unscrew the finial, the whole thing comes apart, and then put it back on and see if the shade sits lower. And then that'll obviously make your lamp look a lot better. Mm -hmm. Well, and I found some favorites. Go can I it. share those now? Please do. Okay. The triple gourd lamps, uh, Suzanne Keisler's triple gourd lamps at Ballard Designs. I'll have links for all of these. They come in, I think, about five colors, a soft blue, white, taupe, green, a sage green. They're really pretty. And they actually, I think, had single double, but the triples were my, my favorite. There was a beautiful brass lamp I found. And this looks kind of like something that would have been in an old-timey office. It has the goosenecked part of the top that goes to the metal shade. So it's kind of a metal base, brass, metal base, and then the metal 
piece that holds the the lampshade. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, although I'm not doing the best job of describing it. We'll put a link in the show notes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then there was a beautiful... Is there a lamp made from a goose or a duck? What is she talking about? It's a goose neck. It's a goose neck. I'm going to stop it. Uh, there's a Miles Red column lamp, table lamp. And it's got the two poles for the light. And it's a beautiful, elegant column with a white shade. Ooh. This is with Ballard Designs. That was beautiful. And then I found a beautiful round ceramic lamp with a kind of a crosshatch blue and white uh-huh. on, the la- on the ceramic base. And then it's got a white shade. And that one is um, Wayfair. It's about a 28 inch. It's the deep 28 inch table. Beautiful. So we'll include those links. And these are some lamps I thought that were really, really pretty. Ooh, nice. Okay, I'm excited to check those out. Yeah, I don't know that the prices are going to be great, though. So I'll right. give that warning ahead of time. Okay, okay. So the prices, Wait the prices for sales. may vary. Prices vary, yeah. No, okay. I think they're all going to be pretty much on the high side. But anyway, they're beautiful lamps. Well. Oh, I did find some, actually, that were inexpensive. The okay. Sophia lamp lighting, I'll include the link, but these are kind of columned lamps that are gold with white shades from an overstock. Uh-huh. And it's a set of two. I thought they were very nice looking and had good reviews. So we'll include those as well. Sounds good. Okay, Nita Jean, you gave us such great info. And do you have a crush to share with us? I do. And this has just started again for the season. And that is the Durrells of Corfu on PBS. One of my favorite shows, because everybody talks about Downton Abbey. They talk about Poldark, but I don't hear people talking about the Durrells. And it's such a fun, lively show. It's based on a book written. It's a true story. And it's, so it's about a British widow who leaves England uh, to live in the island, live on the island of Corfu with her four children aged 11 to 21. And it's around that happens around the time of the 1930s. And they're all just very quirky kids. And at first, they're really not very helpful to their mom. And so you really kind of don't like any of them at the beginning, except the cute little boy who collects all these pets. Uh, but then the, they they start kind of helping their mom out because she doesn't have any money and they're having to survive. Uh, but it's just a fun Fun kind of lively story. Nothing really too bad happens. Uh, so it's just kind of a, a nice getaway. And it's, I mean, how can you not enjoy this visual treat on this beautiful Greek island? So it's it's really, I really enjoy it. Oh, I've never, I've never heard of that. I've never checked that out. Well, check it out. What is it with these women? What did you have? Adana from Mamma Mia heading to Greece and staying there, right? And then you have right. Shirley, well, Shirley Valentine, she also must know took things. off to Greece. Right? That's right. I know. They know things. There's a whole enclave. Maybe if we ever have our retreat, we should have it in Greece. <laughs> I would be so down with that. <laughs> okay. I have a crush uh, to share with you. I had not listened to this band in a very long time, and I was in I don't even know if it was a store. I was someplace and not my own home recently. And they were playing a song by Everything But The Girl. And Everything But The Girl is a, a uh, Tracy Thorne and Ben Watt. And I don't know if they were ever, actually ever a couple. I think I thought they were, but I'm not sure. But anyway, I was introduced to them when I was living in England many moons ago and loved their music, saw them at Victoria and Albert Hall. It, she's very soulful. It's wonderful rainy afternoon music um, with a little edge to it. I really enjoy everything but the girl, particularly their Idlewild album, which is an oldie. Um, then they got into some sort of electronic music later on, which was a complete departure. So if you if you ask Alexa to play them and it comes with up with electronic music, that is not what I'm recommending to you. <laughs> so uh, they have quite a few albums in their 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 a prior sound, I should say, but Idle Wild is my favorite. And I, that is basically the soundtrack of my year plus living in England. I mean, I, I when I visualize myself there, I hear that playing in the background. So it was such a treat to hear it the other day. And I thought, why don't, why am I not listening to this? So I've been listening to them again uh, in my kitchen these days. And I suggest that you do as well. So I'll put a link to um, their, maybe, maybe they have a website or whatnot in the show notes. 
Sounds so, wonderful. I'm going to check them out. Yeah, I enjoy I think all your like music recommendations. Oh, thanks. Um, because because sometimes I think I mean here she is, Alexa, and she'll play anything for me. And sometimes I'm like, I don't know what I want to hear. And then you know I go, do the old default, or you know, well, she probably knows what you want. Well, even she's when getting you don't. a lot smarter. And when Peter was traveling and Laura was away on a choir trip, and it was just me and Alexa and the dogs, like we, we were really jamming together. We listened to a lot of tunes. Oh. <laughs> and I, I now have her, have her reminding me of things too. It's getting a little creepy and good all at the same time. Oh my, my, my. Yeah. So anyway, we have. Um, quite a number of questions that people okay. have been sending in and I have been trying to uh, keep up with them furiously. And okay. so we thought we'd do two questions today uh, in this episode and may do that again in the near future to sort, of, sort of catch us up. So our first question is from Rochelle P and Rochelle sent us some photos. She's a listener and she loves to decorate and she's really enjoying uh, the podcast. So thank you so much for that. So Anita and I have looked at the pictures. She's got this open floor plan with a kitchen and then sort of a an eating area, circular table with four chairs. And then she's got this other open space, which is a smallish space, but um, it's at the well, end of her I kitchen. Think- so it's like a lo- just a long rectangle. Right. It's a long dining room. But it's all part of the same di- room, you would say, right? Well, I mean, I think from the kitchen, you look through and you can see all the way to the other side. So it's this open concept, but she's sort of, you know, delineated it with one table. You could just make it all one dining room, I guess, but um, she's broken it up into three pieces and she's got the far end uh, opposite of the kitchen sort of set up like an office, Uh, but she says she doesn't use it. And so do we have an idea of a better use for that space? Yes. And I looked at the pictures, which I'm, I'm sorry to say, we obviously don't have on the podcast, but basically think of one big room and it's broken into two pieces. One is the main dining room and then one end of it is kind of an office area that's not being used. So Rochelle, I, I think that if you're not using that as an office, then take all that out because I know we as humans, when we see a space, we want to fill it. And I know we all do this, but you know what? We don't really need to. And if you just take that out, it's going to feel more open And I think I would just view that all as one big space. And so fantastic. Congratulations. You've got a very large dining room. And so what I would do over there when you take out the the office part, the office things, the desk and the chair, I would just put a buffet in there and use that as part of your dining room. And then just, you know, use it like, you know, to store plates or whatever and use it. That can be a place where you serve food when you have uh, people over for dinner. Yeah, that's a great solution. Um, My thought is, because I am so loving the chair that I put in my kitchen, and I'm sort of picturing uh, Rochelle's setup where she could do something very similar. Right now, she's got a desk and then uh, like um, some shelves. There's just a lot going on in there, and and it's decorated really well, but there's just too many things, I think. So I think that might be what she's feeling too. And particularly if you're not using the area and you're seeing that there's no way to hide it from the kitchen or when you're eating dinner, you're looking at all of that. So I would take pretty much everything out and I might just put one comfy chair with an ottoman and a small table next to it. And then you could put a buffet or something on the sidewall, or you could even put a, you know, a love seat in there, a small love seat and a chair. I would make it like a, a, Keep it like the nook feel and just, but lessen the amount of decor and smaller things in that space. Um, so, cause I could definitely see sitting there and reading a magazine or being on your iPad or something like that. And, or if there are other people living with Rochelle in the house, like while she's making dinner, somebody coming in and hanging out, it seems like it could be a really comfortable space. So that's what I would do with it. Well, those are two options. Two her. options. It's always good to have choices. So then our next question is from Megan. And Megan is a listener. She found us in the summertime. And she's 28. And she and her longtime boyfriend just purchased their first home. It's uh, in North Carolina near the uh, waterways. So she's feeling like she wants to have this coastal vibe. And Megan is now the proud owner of the most massive 
brick fireplace I have mm-hmm. ever mm-hmm. seen in my entire life. So the photos showed. It looks like maybe it's like a 12 foot section of wall. She says say? it's nine feet wide. Okay, nine feet. Okay. And then it goes up to a vaulted ceiling. So basically, um, you guys, for those not seeing the photo, it's a uh, pretty much the whole wall in her living room slash family room and goes all the way up to where the wall meets the ceiling. And then on one side, when you're looking at it, is a, a normal size firebox for the fireplace. Um, and then a little bit to the right of that is a sort of a cabinet, which looks like maybe the space where people would put the wood and whatnot, but there's a door on it. But the rest of it is just brick. So Megan was thinking, hmm, it's a lot of brick. Um, maybe I'm going to whitewash it and, you know, give it you know, more of a coastal or lighten it up sort of feeling. So she wanted to know what we thought about the wall. What did we think about whitewashing the wall? And um, if we had any ideas about how to work with it in general. Well, I definitely would whitewash it. I think you're going to love it painted white, whether it's a whitewash or a solid white color paint. Um, I just, I know we painted our brick fireplace when we were first married and that was, you know, a while ago. Uh, So painted brick has been popular for a long time. I I don't think you're going to regret it later. It's not very easily reversible. So I do understand your concern about wanting to be sure before you make the leap, but I, I've i never heard of anybody regretting that. And uh, I just haven't seen the trend to go back to red brick. Um, it just seems like it's things have been moving away from that for a long time. So I don't think you'll regret it. And so, yeah, I think a smear, a stain, a, a whitewash, or solid paint, I think any of those would would be fine, depending on what kind of look you want. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. 
Yeah, I agree. But I wouldn't whitewash it, Megan, because I think it's still going to be really, it's so big. I just think it's still going to be really busy if you're whitewashing it because some of the, the, the yeah, you'd have brick, to be careful for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. going to come through. So I would do it in, uh, you know, just a regular latex paint. And I'm going to refer Megan to our episode where we really went deep and on uh, one of our listener questions about painting her fireplace. And we even told her what kind of brush to use and all that kind of stuff. So that was, um, Victoriana and painting a fireplace. And we'll put the link to that episode in the show notes, because this is a question that comes up over and over again. That's why we you know, almost dedicated half an episode to it last time. So my thought with this as well, Anita and Megan and everyone else listening is that, is there a way to sort of break it up? Because the fire box is sm- you know, relative to the wall, so small and off to the one side. And then this wall just keeps continuing. Now, if you painted it all white, I mean, I could see that being sort of a very, you know, sort of clean, modern look, and you just got a lot of brick and that's fine. And the the wall is now just brick, white brick. I think that's great. Um, But the way the mantle is now, it runs all the way across, even where there is no firebox. It runs pretty much the nine feet of that wall. So I was thinking maybe you just take the, change the mantle. It's a very sort of looks like a thin piece of wood and just make it go over the, the true firebox area. So like, okay, this is the fireplace. And then the other part is, you know, it's, it's like, it, it's distinct. And then that's no longer the fireplace. Do you see what I'm saying, Anita? I, I do. And I actually had a thought. I mean, I think that's a great, a great option. And I had a little uh, different thought on that, but kind of similar to what you're saying. And that is to just take the mantle off totally mm-hmm. and go with a big piece of art or a big mirror on that wall. Um, and I would just treat it like a big wall. And uh, I think just taking the mantle, the mantle seems too thin and long. Yeah. Yeah. For, for that space. So I think we're both in agreement on that. And these are definitely two different ways of handling it. But one would just be to take it down altogether. Right. I mean, you could, if depending on how traditional Megan wanted to go, you could actually do a whole brick, uh, excuse me, wooden surround on top of the brick around that firebox and like really highlight that as the fireplace. And then the rest of it just becomes, you know, white painted wall that happens to be brick underneath, you know what I mean? And really delineate that. So I think what I would like to do, and then I had kind of a crazy idea, which is probably a little bit too much, but I think that would suit my purposes if that was my wall and also maybe support Megan's look that she's going for. Um, If you're going for a very modern sort of almost mid-century look, that long expanse of brick would be fine, but a more traditional like slash coastal kind of look. Maybe you want a more traditional surround around the firebox. So consider that, Megan. And then you may probably not for right now. You just bought your first house and you've got a lot of things going on. But there's probably a way with a skilled carpenter to actually sort of in a sense separate the fireplace from the other part and like build over the other part and make it almost like a big um, unit. And maybe that's where the TV goes in there and maybe some bookshelves and things like that. Just putting it on top of the brick and separating it from that other area. So, well, you know what? That's such a big wall too. You could put a massive TV there with the barn doors that slide that yeah. can kind of cover it up and then right. slide to the side. Most fireplaces are not large enough to do that, but you right. could do that here if you wanted to do something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But I definitely think painting it is uh, the way to go. Good instincts you won't be on sorry. that. No, you will not be sorry. No, not at all. And best of luck with your house. That's so exciting. And we're thrilled that you're along with us. Thank you so much for emailing us, Megan. Yes. Thanks, Megan. Oh, wow. What a, what a lot of information in a short amount of time. On yes. The so I hope this was helpful to everyone. And uh, it certainly is making me think I need to go buy some new lampshades. So. I'm going to stockpile some more bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's right. Don't I'm tell anybody such... I'm smuggling him into California. No, 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 no. We won't, we won't we are and don't break any of those mercury bulbs. Consoles. Oh, my God. Oh, I know. I know. Dilemmas, Be careful with those. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Any project you want to talk about, Until any room, time. any space, we are here for you. We really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. 
So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon.